Okay, so this is the almost the last part. It's the last part for experiment one. Um, you you at this point you you will already have built your graph. Let's go over there and then you'll see what else do you need to do about experiment one. Okay, so here's so far what we have done. We built this graph, which is not complete yet. It needs um, an axis title for the y-axis. It needs the remaining data here that you are going to get when you fill out the, the remaining the remainder of this table, the standard deviation, which will serve as the error bars. And then remember that what I test in exam is what does the size of the error bar mean? And then your answer would be small error bars mean that the replicates, which are the, the different uh, measurements you have of some treatment. So in this case, it was, so let me give you an example. Okay, so for example here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There were six measurements of how far the hydronium migrated at 56. Not all the same plate. There was one plate at 56 that somebody measured, another person measured another one. So there were these different, and it could even be the same person, but different plates. Right? That will actually statistically would be better because then you don't have the person variable to also account for. But there is a, these numbers here, they're not exactly the same, although they're pretty tight. Isn't, see that? Nine, nine, nine and a half, nine, nine. Uh, I would expect the error bars of this to be pretty, pretty small. And then this one, four, three, three and a half, maybe, maybe a little larger in terms of three and four, there's a greater difference between nine and nine and a half. Anyway, the more the more these these measurements we, of a single treatment met, uh, vary, the larger would be your error bar. Okay, so for for your paper, you don't include any of the stuff in blue, any of the stuff in gray. You do include the graph, which disappeared. Oh, it's here. Oh, there you go. It takes a while. You do include the graph once you finish it. Once it has uh, four columns here, four here, four here, four here, titles, error bars, and all of them. So you, then you copy and paste this figure, and then underneath it, you write figure one, and then you write, what is figure one telling you? Uh, not the results, just instead of putting a title on this, you are going to put kind of like a title underneath. Okay, that's our experiment one, figure one. Then the other thing you're going to do for for experiment one is uh, you're going to copy and paste both of these tables once they're complete. So we are going to work on these tables now. Uh, don't do this with me yet because I'm going to remind you that this will not work. And the, that and the way I do the reason why I do this is to show to you. Why are we doing the F test? If my if my hypothesis is that uh, I don't know at 20 degrees both molecules will uh, diffuse at the same rate, and at 56 degrees both molecules will diffuse diffuse um, at a rate higher than at 20. So if those are my hypotheses. Then I'm actually looking at averages. So the numbers that I really want, that I care about, are the p-value of the t-test because I want to see, on average, the, what it, how do the diffusion rates compare? But as, as you remember, I'm going to need to calculate uh, uh, the t-test, which asks for a fourth argument that. I, I don't know to enter it here, but let me show you how that will work. So just to make my life easier for me, I'm going to copy, copy this over uh, to like over here. Oh, I may not let me. 
Oh, I knew it was going to say, I don't like how it's merged. Okay, I'm going to have to, to peek there. Okay, so when we do a t-test, we have to, to only vary one factor. So either it's the molecule size or the temperature. I cannot do a t-test comparing hydronium at 20 and uh, phenolred at 56 because then I'm varying two factors. And maybe there's an interaction between those factors. So you're going to learn in statistics that what you do in those cases is, a, is an analysis of variance. It's called ANOVA. We're not doing that here. We're only doing a t-test, which evaluates only one factor at a time. So in here, I fix the temperature, and then I vary the molecule size. So both of these are at 20. And here, I fix the temperature 56, and then I compare the molecule size here. Now I do a t-test comparing at 56 degrees, does the difference in molecule size play a role on how fast the molecule diffuses? Or I could fix the temperature. So, so or I could vary the temperature. So I fix, okay, I have hydronium. Is there a, dif is there a difference in the migration rate when I increase the temperature? So does the temperature play a role for this size of molecule? And then for this other size of molecule, does the temperature play a role? All right, so the t-test is only looking at one factor at a time. And we can do a total of four of them right? In, in, for our experiment here. So for the purposes of this experiment, we are just going to look at the, the radial dis distance, the cumulative one, which is this guy here. So overall, on the 0 to 90, I just want to do the statistics on that. So it's always going to be column M. All right, so here I'm going to do, if I'm going to compare uh, hydronium at 20, so I'm, I'm actually right now just going to write M and to M comma M and to M. It's mostly for myself that right now I know that I'm, everything I'm comparing is in column M. And now I need to see where is hydronium at 20. And that's why I wrote this cheat thing for me here. The small at 20, which is the hydronium, is in rows 7 to 11. So my, my t test will be from M7 to M11. That's why it's a column. And then I'm comparing that to phenolred at 20. So let me look over here again. The large at 20, it's 19 to 23. Okay. So M19 to M23. Okay. Right now it hasn't calculated anything. All I said is I want to compare these two ranges. And as far as Excel knows, I just entered some information, I'm not actually asking it to do anything. For it to do anything, I need to ring my bell first. So I need to put an equal. And if I do that equal here, then it's like, what? What do you want me to do? No, what is this value? What do you, what are you trying to do, lady? I'm like, oh yeah, it doesn't know that I wanted to, to do the t-test. Even though I entered it up here, as far as Excel is concerned, this could be anything that I'm asking it to do. So I'm like, oh, sorry, Excel. You wanted the t-test. All right, so I'm going to click on that. So it says, I want you to enter array one. So that's my array one, which is are the data points that I have for that treatment. I want you to enter array two. That's the data points for that treatment. It wants tails, remember? And now, I, oh, okay. I need to put here a comma. And then one distribution or two tail distribution. We're going to say two tail distribution. And then comma. So the last one, I told you we're never going to enter one here because the data were taken from different plates. Therefore, those data were not paired. Like the we didn't have one Petri dish that had both the hydronium and the phenol red. They're two different Petri dishes. So we never enter number one here. 
we're either going to type two or type three. Um, right now, I don't know because I don't know if it's equal variance or unequal variance. So I'm just going to put question mark here because I don't want to lose all the work that I already did. It's going to complain. Um, that's okay, Excel. I just wanted to, to oh, it's not going to let me. So I'm going to enter, maybe I'll enter four because I know it's not possible. It's probably going to complain. Good. But at least I don't lose all my work. It is still there. But I know four for the last argument is not a possibility. If you remember, how do I figure out uh, what's up with this one, the type? I need to figure out if the average, the variances are equal or unequal. And what I do is I run an F test to figure that out. So I'm going to be lazy slash smart. And I know that the F test that I'm going to do is going to use these data, the same ones. So I'm going to copy that because I'm running the F test on the same data as the T test, but I'm actually looking at different things, right? Right now I'm asking, are the variances significantly different? So I go equal F dot test. Okay, that this is the one. Then it says, all I want is array one and array two. Good thing I already copied. Too many parentheses in the beginning. See how it does like color coding, that's great. And looks like it's ready. Then I push enter. Oh no, why is dividing by zero? M19, M17. Yeah. Oh, I wonder, is, is there, Am I including a data point that is zero? M19, M23. Mm -hmm. No, M93 and M19, M23. Mm. Do not know why it's saying that I'm dividing by zero. All right, so how about let's try something else. So I'm going to go click on column M of the hydronium at 20. Right now, I really don't know. I didn't like what I did, but I don't want to fight it. I just want to get this done. Okay, hydronium at 20, and we want the ones at 90, and it goes down to this line so but only here and then hit enter okay well that's the first argument okay it's first argument then comma second argument phenol red at 20 phenol red at 20 okay it is yeah, it starts on row 19 and it's on 23 So let's see, 19, right? Uh, 19 to 23, but only column M. And then, oh, good. Now we didn't complain. I don't know what was different before. So M7 to M11, M19 to M23. Could be that instead of a column, I type semicolon here. And then it, it doesn't it as a range. All right. So it gives me this number, which is my p-value. And we are going to say our critical p-value is 0.05. So remember, the critical p-value is that limbo bar that if my calculated p-value is under my critical p-value, there is statistical difference. If it is equal or above to my critical p-value of 0.05, there's no statistical difference. So what is our conclusion here? Are the variances for this treatment and this treatment, are they st statistically different or not?
So the way you find out is you compare the calculated p-value against the critical p-value, which in here I'm establishing as 0.05. So if it, since this number is greater than 0.05, so greater than that, then there's no statistical difference. So if there is no difference, the variances are equal. And then, okay, now, now we can go back up. So remember why I did this F test just to see are the variances equal or unequal for this hydronium 20 and phenol red 20. So I'm going to go up here, hydronium 20 and phenol red 20. The last argument, uh, it says enter two if the variances are equal, enter three if they're unequal. So I'm going to enter two. And then hit enter. And let's see, M7. I'm going to copy it from here. And having some typing that I don't see, what's the difference? So these are my two first arguments. I'm, I'm just going to replace with what I have typed over there. Okay, two tails equal variances. There you go. I, who knows what I was typing different. So now you're like, oh, this number, is it uh, 1.2? No, actually, it's a really small number. It's 1.23. And then see that E minus 6? That means 1.23 times 10 to minus 6. Then you're like, wow, that means that the difference was huge because this number is really small. So the, the amount of, uh, of randomness playing a role in the difference is really small, or the probability that it was randomness is small. So that the diffusion rate between these two indeed is statistically significant. So is there a statistically significant difference? Oh, yes because this number is very really small. So your conclusion is that the averages are the, oh, statistically different. And that's it. So you do the same for the other ones. You want to start to save time. You want to start with your F test for each of these. All your changes, uh, what are the data that you are comparing? It's always column M. What's going to change is the row number. And then depending on what, what number this uh, comes about and if it's statistically different variances or not, then your last argument is going to be a two or a three. So two for uh, um, not different variances and three for different variances.